Hello everyone. Welcome to the Python Western Data Talks Analytics in Stock Market Zoom Camp. We are glad that all of you joined to this event. We are sorry that we announced uh, runtime GMT instead of GMT plus one. And next time we will change all our announcements to GMT plus one, which is Dublin and London time. As a reminder, I want to tell you that uh, all information shared here is not an investment ad advice. We discuss different strategies, different data sources, but we never tell you what to invest and when to invest. So let's begin. Module one, introduction and data sources. For those who don't know me, I'm Ivan Brigida. I work for about 10 years at Google as a business intelligence analyst. I have a computer science degree and another degree on finance and data analysis. I founded a pythoninvest.com project about three years ago where I wrote different um, analytical articles and long reads. And also about that time I started to, to do um, trading as a re retail investor. Today we will cover um, these sections. First, I'll answer some of the questions that we didn't have time to answer during the pre-launch session. Then I will update a questionnaire um, results. Next, we will talk about introduction and try to understand data-driven decisions. That's why uh, that's. Um, we will try to explore the philosophy of a, of a trader and an investor. We'll see a um, landscape of potential personal investments as a retail investor. We'll talk about risk versus reward can, concept, and I'll show you some of the data pools. Next, uh, we'll switch to call up and to different uh, data sources, which you might uh, use for your projects and for your, for your homeworks. Just as a reminder, uh, you uh, please please join to, to slido.com and uh, add this hashtag SMAZ um, and ask questions, vote for questions that are related to the content. Uh, we won't be able to answer uh, to your live questions on YouTube, but I will try to, to check all questions that you ask um, in uh, Slido, in Telegram or in Slack. Here are a few questions that I didn't answer uh, previous time. First, uh, finance argues that prices reflect all the available information, making it impossible to systematically beat the market. How will you deal with it in the course? I know about it, um, but of course there are no guarantees to, to win or to beat the market. But there are many retail investors, mutuals, mutual funds, hedge funds and other financial organizations who regularly invest and participate in this activity. So it's up to you whether you want to participate, whether you want to try and do risk management and stop when you do not see profits. Second thing, we will discuss the concept of a relative growth versus some benchmark. And you will need to define a benchmark that you compare yourself against. And we will discuss the conditions when uh, a person should engage or not engage in active investing or trading. Question two, how much math do we need to know in order to succeed in the course? I'd say you don't need to know uh, any advanced math. Um, what you need to know is general education math. Um, although if you want to do some complex models um, or complex simulations, linear algebra probability theory statistics will be very useful for you. Question three, how can you share, uh, can you share in the description of the video some references to the theoretical concepts underlying strategies? I do not cover any theoretical concepts because the breadth of the courses is quite, uh, quite wide. Um, but you can always Google um, those um, theoretical concepts. 
we will focus purely on the practical aspects of um, analysis, coding, simulation, and trading. Has Ivan used popular technical analysis strategies like Falcon, SMC, BTMM, Trendline, Divergence, etc.? Um, I can't name myself as a technical trader, so I do not use these strategies, but I think this is a perfect example to use in your capstone project. Does the course follow the repo, um, Python invest basic finalist analysis? That repo has uh, many collapse uh, from my long reads. I will add links to, to the articles and to the code um, where I can, but uh, the course doesn't follow directly this repo. All content is new, it's never published before. Question six, in model four, will a feature of trading strategies uh, we learn about include tax considerations? This is a very interesting question. Generally, I do not use this. I optimize pre-tax profit. Uh, but you can try to integrate uh, your tax schemes uh, to the strategies. For example, I, I read about capital gain, gain tax, CGT in Ireland, and it is 33% on all types of stocks and crypto, but 42% uh, on ETFs. That's why probably I'm more incentivized to, to trade stocks in, instead of ETFs. Then in Ireland, we have 1.27k euro um, capital gain that is non, not taxed uh, in a year. In, in the UK, it is 6,000 um, pounds. So you might want to invest and to, to see the, the profits that are less than this sum not to be taxed or um, calculate the, the tax gains that you might occur. Then we don't have any difference between long term and short term capital gain tax compared to the USA. Um, then more than that, in the UK, there are CGT and share matching rules, which is an interesting thing, uh, which says that if you sold um, some share and bought it again in uh, less than 30 days, you might pay less taxes. This is uh, also can be used for your strategies. And please, please try to, to use this, try to do this and show in your projects. Now let's switch to, to the question here. I've updated the analysis um, on the data one week ago. Um, it is about uh, 1200 uh, submissions or 50% more people answer to, to the questions. The country split is approximately the same uh, with the leading countries, USA, India, Nigeria, UK, Germany, Canada, Brazil, and Spain, representing about 60% of total uh, answers. Um, next, I've uh, updated the analysis using uh, ChatGPT API and I asked um, to analyze your responses uh, to the question how you plan to apply the knowledge that you will receive or what are the investing ideas that you have. Now we have more answers. It is about 500 answers and I color coded those answers which are uh, best fit, medium fit or low fit for this course. Um, of course, I'm trying to um, cover as many aspects as I can about algorithmic trading using Python. We will try to create an automated trading system and we will try to do financial market predictions and analysis. Uh, we will um, always talk about personal stock and investment management as a retail investors. Um, we won't be covering that much um, information, extract information from financial reports for decision making. Although today we will cover um, SEC um, Edgar uh, data source. So you can go and write an, al uh, an algorithm to extract those reports and analyze them somehow. Um, 
what we're trying to build here, it's it's very close to robo advisory platform um, or um, what what current robo advisory platforms um, offer you. Uh, then we will talk about predictive models for stock prices using historical data and potential macroeconomic factors. We will go. We won't go too much into the specifics of uh, machine learning models and different types of them. But I will show you some examples which you can replicate uh, straight away using your data. Um, we won't talk much about how to develop a security screening um, tool for specified fundamental value analysis or how to create tools to track changes in multiple companies. Um, so you can combine all of that, but it's not about visualization, it's not about web services or um, and um, product tools for, for the market. Uh, we will um, try to, to build the analysis tool or uh, try to build a, a comprehensive data set for personal use uh, when you do trade in stocks. Um, we won't design an interface uh, where brokers can visualize stock market reports in, in real time, but probably for someone who is working, uh, for a broker, it can be very, very useful to understand um, what is needed by the market. And um, we won't uh, build a financial assistant or AI agent for trading. Although I saw that Data Talks started um, their or plan to start their new uh, course on LLM. And if any of you um, can actually build this financial assistant or AI agent, I would be very happy to see this in, in the projects. There are many other interesting applications like sports trading, time series for fintech, options, crypto, currency markets, risk management, ML and deep learning, real-time insights, pair trading, handling long-time data, behavioral finance, web scraping, and automation um, mentioned. We will try to be to, to cover a wide variety of topics, but probably not all of these topics. Um, on the next slide, I try to categorize the involvement and time spans and goals that you might have um, when you plan to finish this course. We will start from easy ones, that is one, two, three, and we will finish with the hard ones where you need to be full in, in the course. So easy, uh, you will get, uh, you will obtain new skills. You can copy notebooks, replicate the code. Uh, it will be Python analytics, financial skills, automation skills, um, very useful skills for your future uh, or existing jobs. Second, um, you can register with the broker I saw that there were not many people who do active trading or who do trading with real money at all. So it can be a first step that it's not that complicated. And as a result, you can get a trading skill. Uh, third, we all love to compete. So there will be a leaderboard after every um, home assignment completion. Um, those who completed the home assignment, they will receive uh, some score and they will compete with each other. And on top of that, um, I include not uh, only uh, close-ended questions, but also an exploratory questions uh, where you need to find something else, which I didn't mention during the course, something else which might be helpful for your market, for your project. Then, um, Level number four, it's a portfolio. Um, you can develop a project. Um, you can create this project and uh, that makes uh, trading recommendations. And it, it is a good um, portfolio addition uh, to, to GitHub. And if you ever try uh, to work as a data scientist, analyst, or uh, just a software engineer, um, it's, a, it's a very good thing to have. Um, level number five, investing. Um, if, um, if you plan to 
actually use uh, this course uh, for investing if you are investing already and after you build uh, the trading system you can adjust all the examples for your uh, market vertical product particular investment idea you can experiment with the model and strategy hopefully uh, if you do it for a, a long uh, time so uh, you will get some profit so this is a uh, level number six so it's it's not any idea but it is a profitable idea and level number seven this is the the hardest and the ultimate goal at least for me um, that uh, you can achieve a sustained profitability that is over the long period of time of 5 10 20 years you can um, you can have a lot of trades using your uh, algorithm um, and those trades on average will be uh, profitable and they will be profitable at a higher rate than a benchmark that you decide to choose against so let's start the introductory part um, why do we need to do all of this and the easiest thing uh, to start with is to understand the context of course economic context uh, is quite different in uh, different regions and countries um, so most of my examples will be about uh, us or global markets and for the us um, you can um, start from the gdp it is a well-known measure um, it is a potential gdp in billions um, this, uh, uh, this is a left scale and it grew for 60 years at some rate and normally uh, what we track is year over year growth. This is a right scale and you can see um, that um, from 2010 uh, to, to the last year it is gradually improving and it is somewhere between 2% and 2.5%. If you compare your investments or your income um, versus global economic growth, so over the long period of time, it, it should grow hopefully at least uh, as fast as you see uh, GDP growth in, in your country. Um, you can read uh, about this data series uh, using this, this uh, link spread. Uh, there are many other indicators on macro and articles it's a it's a good uh, source to to read um, i also uh, suggested you to to follow um, some of the um, data sources uh, to get regular updates um, and uh, there was recently a macro update for q124 from simply wall street and they, they do have updates every single week, I believe. Um, and um, some time ago, I wrote an article about macro data on Python Invest. There are about 60 different indicators, which I think are important and are connected uh, with the trading activities in the US. Um, I see there is a code snippet number one. So I will show you how you can get exactly the same um, data. Um, you probably saw that uh, we, we added uh, slides and code uh, on uh, GitHub. And uh, if you click module one, you have the link uh, for, for this notebook. I will show um, all examples uh, that can be executed uh, via Google Colab. Uh, probably in most of the cases you can execute it locally, um, but it it may um, have some local dependencies and you, you may need to tune slightly the code. So if you never used Colab before, you need to open colab.research.google.com, um, click GitHub, copy past this address uh, you, you will have it here so I click it here this is a new instance this is a my local instance and I can connect so that's why um, it is a standard 
standardized connectivity, standardized libraries, and I try to write uh, the code in such a way that you don't need to manage any dependencies. If there are some dependencies like uh, this module Y Finance, you will have it straight away that they need to be installed. Uh, and now I can run all. Uh, it says that it's a um, foreign call up. I authorize it to, to run it and uh, straight away uh, I will receive uh, the the latest data and as you can see for example last week there was no data uh, for for the last um, gdp stats for for the last month or for the last uh, cpi stats and uh, today this data appeared and you can see the, that data so this is easy, you can run it, you can adjust. Now all objects are in, in the memory and you can um, change uh, some parameters or some functions. And our first data, uh, data set is um, US potential GDP. It is, um, it is here. So the, the only thing uh, that you need to know for uh, extracting data for your homework um, is, is this line of code. You, you need to import Pandas data reader as PDR and you need to write this PDR.dataReader and uh, show the, t the, the, the time series that you want to download. You see GDP pod, it's exactly the same as you uh, have it here in the uh, URL address for Fred. Um, and then you will have a data as a, as a pandas data frame. I generate additional um, metrics that are um, year over year growth and quarter over quarter growth. I know that this data is quarterly. That's why I need to shift uh, uh, for uh, four uh, times um, a go uh, to, to, to have a year over year growth and here for quarter over quarter here is a first uh, error that it should be shifted only one quarter ago and then uh, um, if you don't understand um, the details of this graph uh, that's not a problem we we don't use any complicated uh, visualization or you can ask chat gpt to to change or explain you um, the the stats the important thing is that you you can download the data as a pandas data frame and you can work with the pandas data frame okay let's move on the second uh, thing is um, core cpi or inflation there are different ways how inflation can be defined and um, one of the ways uh, which is commonly used is called core CPI. And here, uh, using exactly the same approach, downloading data from FRED, um, using another time series data. So here you see CPI, L, F, E, S, L. So you need to know um, the time series name or you need to browse uh, FRED database and read their articles, they have links um, to, to see what are the most commonly used indicators or what they advise to use. And if you compare this with the previous um, data, especially on, on the growth, it's quite different. So it's not growing somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5%, but it, there was a spike to about 7% in the US. In other countries like UK and Ireland, it was about 10% or even more and now it's going down so there is uh, uh, some disbalance but it is closer uh, to you as a retail investor or as, as a person living in that country you feel that prices for products are growing up uh, with the rate of inflation um, there are many other ways to define inflation and you can look at the other um, 
parts of the inflation. So this one does not include food and ten energy. You can uh, look specifically at the food and energy inflation, especially if you try to analyze uh, retail companies. Uh, also, you can um, check the interest rates and inflation estimates on financial markets. And those estimates here, there are the links, you can read about them. There is an article. Um, these estimates are daily. They are not monthly and not quarterly. Now we have some economic context and if we start to save money um, just with, with the cash, what can we get from easiest options that, that we have? Let's assume that currency is dollars or euro. If, if uh, you do nothing, you will get 0%. If you have uh, your uh, money at the savings account, um, and many of them, they just don't pay any interest. This is not good uh, because uh, inflation is more than 0% and of in 10 years you might lose like 30% of your savings in terms of buying power because you won't be able to buy the same amount of goods. So now let's think about traditional methods like saving uh, in a bank. Uh, in, in Ireland um, you can get uh, two three percent of an interest pay in, uh, interest rate in a traditional bank um, these uh, savings are protected usually uh, up to some amount um, but also inflation in Ireland is about 3.5 percent which is less than uh, interest rate that you can get in a bank um, probably next idea um, will be uh, to go to the money service businesses um, like WISE um, in, in Europe or um, other new companies like Revolut. Um, they can offer a higher rate of savings. WISE offers 3.67% uh, in Euro and 5% in, in dollars, which is not bad. Um, but probably um, those money won't be protected uh, by the government and by the money protected scheme or they may be protected. You need to read uh, the details. Um, if you go to a broker, in I used uh, the Giro uh, broker from Netherlands, they, they don't pay any interest uh, on uninvested cash. Um, if uh, I use uh, Trade Republic, um, a bank and a broker from Germany. It offers 4% in Euro and money protection up to 100K Euro. I never tried to use this, uh, but probably it seems to be a good option to have uh, benefits from a traditional bank and also uh, to, to participate in, in investing using the same uh, account. Um, what I tried to use is Interactive Brokers, one of the biggest uh, brokers in the US and it offers 4.83% in dollars and 3.45% in euro, which is slightly higher than inflation rate that I have. But they also say that uh, they have it only for um, money that are um, higher than first 10k of deposit that uh, you might have. Moving to the next uh, stage, um, if you start investing, uh, you might want to compare versus um, rates of return or versus cost of borrowing money. And probably the most uh, famous and important rates, at least in the US, is a Fed funds uh, rate. Federal funds rate is, an inter is the interest rate at which depository institutions trade federal funds um, with each other overnight. Overnight is important. This is one day rate and um, this is a benchmark rate for many other rates. Because um, federal funds uh, is, is a government organization, it is treated to be um, not risky at all and many other rates 
even if it's a one day rate or overnight rate will be uh, higher because they, they have uh, some risk that a borrower won't return money to you. And uh, normally, uh, if, if you um, lend money for a longer period of time, like one month, one year, 10 years, uh, you should have uh, a higher rate because um, uh, someone who gives you money, uh, they might not have it back immediately. So they are locking those money and uh, those money are not liquid and longer period of time, um, it's, it should be higher return because otherwise they might do arbitrage and they might uh, um, uh, lend money for a several um, shorter period of times and get a higher um, rate of return uh, versus uh, one longer period of time. And um, it's, it will be beneficial for them because um, they uh, won't lock money for, for the long period of time. Right now, um, there is an interesting situation uh, on the market uh, that uh, these rates are inverted uh, for, uh, um, for T-bills, for a government's um, uh, T-bill uh, rates. And uh, there will be a home assignment uh, for you to, to analyze when uh, it was started, what's the biggest difference, and you can read whether it has any um, particular implications uh, for, uh, for an investor. Okay, and code snippet number three, let's look here. The algorithm is exactly the same. Um, Fed funds, we use uh, the same approach um, here is an URL address, a different time series. We call um, these methods, we receive an answer, and that's what we have. Um, this is a monthly Fed funds rate. It's exactly the same for the last few months. There, there are big debates uh, that Fed will or won't reduce this, this rate and um, many market participants, they, they make predictions around this and uh, make their own strategies around this. Um, visualization is slightly different. We don't have uh, any relative uh, metrics. Uh, we don't need to calculate growth rates. And here we have only one um, line time series. Okay, what do we have next? Next step, um, if you understand approximately um, the rates of uh, borrowing money, um, so for, for Fed funds it is 5%, for uh, corporate uh, bond markets it's probably 6-7% in the US, it is higher than what you can get in savings accounts or in GDP growth, but still, um, Next thing is uh, to look at the stocks markets and, uh, and the most well-known uh, benchmark for the US stock markets is S&P 500 and uh, that's um, what we exactly did in, in this uh, section. We have a s and 500. Here I have a different um, data source, stook.com. So Pandas data reader, they um, implemented uh, different uh, functions and different uh, ways of accessing the data. And you can get it from uh, Yahoo Finance, which we will discuss later, or from data, get data Stook. And on stook.com, there, there is a number of indexes which you can obtain using exactly the same method, but probably looking at the Indian uh, stock market or Mexican stock market, um, you will just need to substitute uh, this, uh, this ticker and you will get uh, the, the data. So for, uh, for S&P 500, uh, the situation is as following. 
it, it is growing uh, very often, but not always. And uh, specifically in the last uh, probably two, two years or so, it is growing um, more than 0%. And uh, lastly, it is about 20% uh, year over year growth. That means that um, you might want to, to be involved in the stocks trading. The problem with that is that sometimes it can go down um, 20% or 40%. So you might not want to invest all of your money into um, these type of assets. But uh, you can guess that um, sometimes these um, type of uh, assets, um, stocks or uh, stock indexes or stock ETFs, it can have a very high growth rate and your benchmark can be exactly this index or uh, some mix of, uh, of indexes and you will track against this benchmark. And now let's think about um, real implications of investing into different um, types of assets. Uh, for example, if uh, you invest in three months T-bill, uh, there are ETF funds and you can get this rate. Uh, the average rate of return is about 3.3%. Now it is probably 5%. Five years ago, it could be 2% or 1%, but Normally, it is more than zero. It is just uh, very small. And then if you go into real estate, average return is 4.4. In T-bond is 4.9. In gold, 6.5. In corporate bonds, 7%. And in S&P 500, 11.5. Um, the difference is that if you receive um, just a 3% return, on, on your investments, uh, it will take you 24 years to double your, your capital. And if you go into S&P 500, uh, it will be six years. It's, it's a four times difference. But it's not, not always like this. It is an average uh, growth over a big period of time. Now uh, let's combine everything that we have here in the introduction. Um, if you want to develop a profitable trading strategy, uh, first thing uh, we want that any strategy should be positive uh, in returns and uh, in the local momentum in one day, in one week, it may be negative, but if you take rolling returns over the last one month or six months, you should try to make it at least positive um, every given period. If it's not positive, probably you need to shut down the strategy for a moment, you need to update it, you need to start another strategy and so on. So then we saw that S&P 500 is 10, 11% of an average yearly return. Um, or if you subtract inflation, it is about 7% of the return. Oftentimes, as I said, um, the, the people uh, consider a mix of uh, S&P 500 or uh, um, stock markets and bond markets. This is called 60-40, uh, 60% 60 equity, 40% bonds. And that means that you sacrifice some of the long-term returns. You might have a, a smaller yield or smaller return of 7.4% percent or five percent inflation adjusted and you can use it as a benchmark uh, to compare for your future strategy you just need to decide um, what trader you are what's your risk profile and what's your period of of investment and now it's it's a sweet spot here so everything that is that grows higher than everything before it's it's a, it's a, already a great thing to have so probably uh, what i do I, I invest most of my funds into passive strategy and it is somewhere between s p 500 bonds or um, what is called passive investment uh, strategy and i get some some return in from this period 
but if I do active trading, I participate in active trading only if I can get a higher returns from my strategy. There are some well-known examples. So uh, pro your expectation should be not probably not to achieve 100% or 200% yearly growth uh, over the long period of time. In the momentum, you might achieve this, but over the five, 10 years, it is very hard. Or if you achieve this, you're a genius. 22% average uh, yearly return is reported um, for uh, Warren Buffett. And 66% yearly return is reported for Renaissance Technologies. I advised uh, to read a book about it. It's, it's quite an interesting book to read. But these strategies, uh, or at least for Renaissance Technologies and other hedge funds, uh, they are highly secretive. Uh, so you might not have access to them. Um, now let's talk a little bit about risk reward and different asset classes. As um, you saw in previous slides, we, we, we discussed uh, uh, treasury bills uh, returns. We discussed 60, 40 stock uh, bonds uh, portfolio, US stocks, and there may be other um, types of assets which you want to combine somehow. And uh, if you combine in them in specific weights, you might um, have uh, um, characteristics of, of your portfolio which are good for you. For example, you want to optimize with overall return and uh, you don't care that sometimes uh, your portfolio can be down for 30 or 40 percent or you just don't allow your portfolio to be down for more than 10% and you want to optimize um, in such a way that uh, your drawdown is not uh, bigger than 10% at any given time. And that's why um, economists, they developed this efficient frontier line. And it actually says a simple idea that um, if you want to achieve um, some um, combination of uh, achieve the best performance from some combination of, of uh, assets, uh, you need to combine them in, in a special way and you will have this efficient frontier line. And the, the shape of this line says that when, when you um, try to achieve a higher uh, annualized uh, return, you will have you will generally generally have a higher volatility or higher risk so that's that's the trade-off um, that's if if you want to to risk uh, more and and bet for for higher yields uh, you will have bigger fluctuations i wrote articles about this uh, over the part portfolio with crypto and practical portfolio optimization uh, the code is there um, please please read um, now let's think about your, your project and future characteristics uh, of a trading strategy that uh, you might want to develop as, as your uh, capstone project. So first risk um, or risk return profile uh, can be very different by investor and you need to decide um, what, what is your risk uh, that, that you, you want to bet. And then um, usually what I see from, from the literature that um, if, if you're a young investor, you don't have a, a lot of capital, it's, it's recommended to, to try different strategies and to, to have slightly more risk. And then when, um, when you have some experience and when you have a higher capital, uh, you take a more conservative strategy. Um, next, um, Next is to select the, the benchmark to, uh, tr to trade against. Um, probably the easiest benchmark uh, is 60-40 portfolio or just S&P 500 portfolio if, if you are investing in, in the US. If it's other markets, just select a benchmark uh, for, for the index in uh, that market and you will have uh, that benchmark. The idea is that um, sometimes the overall index goes down 
and it is natural that your uh, strategy may go down as well but if you go down less than the benchmark that means that your strategy is working and you you are generally better off than a generic benchmark from the from the data perspective um the the thing is that all markets are inter interconnected and you need to check this you you need to um, download different macro indicators other assets types like gold commodities uh, bonds markets equity markets global local and check correlations and try to model so you need to to read about the the strategy of the market that you want to invest in and think about um, what metrics, what features you you will need uh, to participate in in uh, building a good uh, strategy. So now let's let's move to to the practical setup. I already showed you how to work with with Colab and. Um, my first article actually on the Python and Best uh, website was about um, um, Python environment and you can read um, this article following this link, pythoninvest.com slash longread slash Python environment. So why do we use uh, Colab? First, it's, it's very easy. You can reuse my code, you can share, um, your code on uh, GitHub and uh, other people uh, might use it as well. There are no barriers to start or small barriers to, to, to start. Um, many libraries are already installed on the machine. It can be quite powerful from the box. Actually, uh, you can have T4 GPU for free. Um, it's not guaranteed time, but you can run a deep learning model and uh, it's, uh, it, it, it has some power. Um, what I really enjoy to have uh, um, as an analyst that uh, all executions are saved and you have uh, the results uh, of, of them uh, stored in, in a notebook. And some of the saved executions like Plotly Exp Express visualizations um, they might be dynamic so that um, you can access uh, them even after visualization and uh, you can have much more than you can get from a, just a static table. Uh, the pros of this approach is that um, it's not guaranteed that it will execute uh, as, uh, for, for a long period of time, especially if you have some uh, uh, heavy models um, you may need to um, upload um, anything um, that you want to use as a file or you need to save it on a Google Drive uh, or somewhere else and uh, uh, write the code that can access it. And there are several al alternatives. For example, you can use local Jupyter Notebooks on Anaconda or you can use IDE like VS Code and uh, you can even integrate notebooks to develop uh, in uh, this ID uh, or you can um, make a remote connection port forwarding and develop on another machine. We won't need this until the last uh, moment, the, the last module of automation. Everything before that we will do in, in Colab. So now let's talk um, more deeply about data sources for, uh, for stocks. And many of them um, can, can be used for other um, financial assets as well. So our first um, um, data source is uh, Yahoo Finance, which provides daily or minute uh, or hourly uh, data on open, high, low, close and volume data for many, many different types of uh, assets. Um, one natural idea uh, on, on this data is to, to generate tech, technical indicators. It will be covered in module two because uh, it's 
um, a technical way of working with, with the data and producing additional features for your data frame. I have just uh, wrote an article about it. Hopefully I can record a video on it in, in uh, one week. And then we discussed briefly a uh, macro data source, uh, which is FRED in, in my case for 90% of, uh, of the macro data. And I use Pandas data reader library. Financial reporting for um, US stock markets, it's Edgar. I have a slide about it on, as well. For news, uh, I used uh, two news providers. It's polygon.io, it's actually a paid um, financial data uh, with the free tier and it has uh, a lot of different endpoints, not just news, but it was quite convenient for me and enough uh, to, to use it as a, um, at, at a free tier. Um, but before that, I, I wrote an article using News API and at that time, about two years ago, it had a longer um, period of uh, freely available history, um, which is um, quite a good thing to have. Then um, fundamental data. Normally, uh, it's, it's available easily uh, for the few latest periods. Um, for example, if you go to the Yahoo Finance, you will be able to get it. Um, but not always. If you want to, to use the 10 or 20 years of history for fundamental data, uh, you will need to pay for this or do web scraping. Um, there are many other um, data sources like alternative data. It can be YouTube, revenue meetings, user-generated content, Twitter or X, uh, Reddit, YouTube, or anything else related to the business. We will discuss later the, the examples of this um, data. And also one um, additional type of, uh, of an alternative data, it's uh, events data. Probably you, you want to design a strategy around some events. Um, for example, it is well known that um, during the earnings season, and it's just started for, for the Q1 in the US, uh, more and more companies, they are just reporting uh, earnings uh, in, in April. And during earnings uh, season, if the reporting is, is good, there is or bad, there, there are stock um, price fluctuations. So you might want to catch this and you might want to know in advance what are the earning dates. Uh, another example is ETF flows. Uh, exchange traded uh, funds are the biggest participants of the market. They are institutional investors. Uh, and if uh, those ETF uh, companies decide to invest in this or, or that stock, it's may it may change the price of a stock considerably. The problem for us is that uh, they report uh, on their invest in investments only quarterly and only with some lag, so you can't see it in real time. Probably it's hard to, to, to design a strategy around it, but still you may be able to do something. Uh, activist investors actions, um, there are specific type of companies who participate in uh, um, activist uh, activities um, and uh, you can read articles about it, you can follow these companies, uh, you can check their reportings and probably design strategy around this as well. So let's check in detail uh, all these data sources. Um, before we go in, in coding, I would suggest you to, to look at um, some uh, stock screeners uh, tools. I personally like TradingView uh, slash screener, but there are many of them available. And um, just for you to understand what, what is the potential types of data that you might get. And you can see from here, um, I uh, designed a simple portfolio with, with an idea um, that I want to invest into the US stocks uh, that are included in S&P 500 that have dividend yield um, more than 2% uh, 
I could uh, include other uh, metrics like uh, biggest market capitalization or high or low price on earnings or earnings per share or anything else and, um, and then revenue growth in uh, in the last 25 uh, revenue growth is is uh, uh, more than 25 percent year over year and you can see um, that uh, it's it's only for companies within um, these uh, requirements or uh, if, if you think about trading strategies, uh, we can discuss it later uh, as a hand rules. Maybe you already know some verticals or some companies and you have these rules when you um, decide uh, whether you want to invest or not. And you can improve or, uh, these rules. So you can start from these rules before you go into the, uh, into the ML modeling. Uh, so this uh, data source, um, as you can see here, it's the main data source and it is qu quite an important one. I have more examples here, um, code snippet 5. As, so here you can see that um, I download data from Yahoo Finance, not from Stook and um, you, you need to read about uh, the description, uh, whether it is a real time or 15 minutes lag, uh, whether it is an index or ETF. Um, for example, if, if I want to, to, have, to, look, to have a DAX, a German index, um, I can get it from here within one line of code. Um, here is one trick uh, of an approximate year-to-year -year growth. Um, as you might know, uh, stock exchange doesn't work uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, and um, there are some holidays, uh, so it's, it's quite uh, hard to calculate year-over-year -year growth if you just want to match with the date one year ago, because stock exchange might uh, not work at that time. That's why uh, we shift on 252 days uh, ago. And it's it's uh, well known that normally there are 252 trading days in a year. And that's how you can you can get the year over year growth. We divide adjusted close um, this year on the adjusted close one year ago. Here, here is a graph of, of absolutes. Uh, stats. Um, what I wanted to call out here is that you, you can select uh, one feature, you can um, have dot plot and dot line, dot bar, dot area, and you can have a visualization without many parameters. And when you want to publish it uh, somewhere uh, or prettify, you can ask ChatGPT or you can go and, and make it uh, pretty but if you just need to do a quick analysis you can you can be um, very practical with uh, this uh, one line of um, code okay um, what do we have here s p 500 daily de delayed not delayed um, uh, etfs uh, other um, ETFs, so it's 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 all the same. Now we, we have uh, important thing which you need for your uh, home, ass home assignments. Um, if uh, you have a ticker, in this case is EPI, uh, you can get actions and you can get dividends with the dates and with the dollars paid as a dividend. So you will be asked to calculate a dividend yield for a. Uh, particular stocks uh, in your home assignment and you can use these these functions. Okay, let's move on. So please read uh, these articles. Uh, you can find more details about the data source. But it's the most fundamental and underlying data source and that we will use everywhere. Next, uh, paid data. Um, I used Polygon.io, iXCloud. Y Finance has some paid sub subscription as well. 
there are some other providers please um, write this in comments if you use them if you find them useful or better than free data we can share it with everyone microeconomic stats uh, we talked a lot uh, about fred and database but it covers only us data mostly although it has some global stats um, you might want to, to look at the other indicators like global interest rates or German stock market and related indicators. And so there are plenty of websites available. And the idea here is that you might want to use web scraping or they, they can have their own subscription and provide the data via API. So here, for example, I have a URL, Trading Economics, United States Indicators, um, standard headers, I write this request.get. And in many cases for the static uh, web page, um, you will receive some, some response. And uh, then you can find um, specific elements. Uh, in my case, it, it's a table. So you need to know a little bit about HTML markup, but you can also ask ChatGPT and it can provide you a working code. And uh, that's uh, now you can see that uh, there are many um, metrics um, available uh, via web scraping. The problem is that uh, there is uh, no historical stats for all of these metrics, but you can uh, find uh, separate pages for each of the metrics and so they might track it. Um, okay. Financial reporting for public companies. I think about 30, 40 years ago, there was a system called AdGuard, um, millions of files there. So if you're a good a software engineer and um, you want to build a system, using local or hosted LLMs to analyze those feelings. I think uh, it is very good thing to have. It's hard, but possible. Um, you can download these raw text files, you can analyze them. There are some um, paid products, um, companies like sec-api.io provide um, access to, to the data. They have some free tiers of probably first 100 calls that you can do for free for you. So they already downloaded the data, wrapped it in a Python package and made it available for you to, to be used. Um, but uh, the, the downside is that oftentimes it is paid. And there are some other examples how you can use this data as well. Uh, web scraping, I already showed um, how you can do this. Um, I think it's a very powerful thing, especially uh, you can replicate or replace those market screeners just within a few, um, maybe hundreds lines of code. Um, for example, this, uh, website coin, coin, uh, companies market cap. It has different uh, pages like uh, most profitable companies on earnings, market cap, revenue, employees, P ratio, and uh, many of these pages, and they have a download CSV file button. And you can see in, in, in this code snippet number eight, and uh, that's you can you can download um, this, this file very easily. Uh, there is a URL and uh, um, then I have downloads, uh, download link um, with uh, these parameters, download equals CSV. Um, I save the response in, in the text. Uh, I write it to the file and I read it um, from CSV. So as a result of, of uh, this um, call, um, I have a CSV file generated, which, uh, which is a file that was downloaded from the, from the website. Then I read it 
with uh, pandas and now I can analyze all of this data. And actually that file contains information about 8,000 uh, stocks uh, straight away. So you see 8,362 companies. Um, financial news, um, I don't have uh, examples uh, straight away. Um, it's quite quite hard um, for for um, for a retail investor to, to build um, um, an efficient uh, trading strategy around this, probably because news um, are centered around uh, largest companies. You will get them um, after um, the reporting is published or after a few days of the event, and probably it is too late and oftentimes they are built by journalists and not financial analysts so you might um, create a better analysis by yourself but um, i tried to to do some analysis on use and there are two articles on the python invest uh, website it's uh, one is on new sentiment and news api uh, and second one on uh, polygon.io api and um, uh, ChatGPT um, API for financial news summarization. And you can actually read a weekly news feed that they publish on the web website based on, on that algorithm. Um, so these um, data, data source, I think um, this can be your um, competitive edge. This, uh, this is uh, something that um, you might use beyond traditional sources. Um, for example, um, financial reporting dates. Uh, you, you can anticipate future reporting dates or uh, companies that you are tracking and you can um, track straight away and download the reporting information or YouTube screencast uh, just minutes or even real time when it hap it happens and do the train the the trading then ipos um, you may know uh, when new companies uh, will go into ipos you can build a model uh, to predict whether that ipo uh, will be a long term growth or not big conferences and and announcements um I'm working for Google, many IT companies, um, they announce new um, products or new model shipments at their conferences and it can actually um, change their stock price after just after the announcements. Big contracts, uh, if you can have a, a, a proxy for a, for a new big um, customer, um, that's a good thing to have. Merchants and acquisitions of a non-public companies. Um, very often, even public companies, they, they grow um, when, uh, when they acquire smaller non-public companies, um, whether they acquire some product or some team. And if you read about it, you, you can um, trade uh, respectively. Then uh, research in the field. There are articles um, on machine learning and AI, health and biotech. Um, there, there are experiments. So you can track who is publishing them and whether it, uh, the amount of articles can predict the stock prices. Other sources, um, trends on social media. I, I think uh, it's, it's quite messy. Uh, Google Trends, stock tweets, Reddit, um, probably you, you can generate something meaningful. ETF funds flow, there is a website hedgefollow.com and uh, you can track um, your funds of interest. For example, Renaissance Technologies that has a, a very good long-term performance. Um, you can see um, what do they currently have or activist investor cases, uh, top funds. Then you can uh, download YouTube calls, YouTube uh, videos with uh, revenue um, calls and um, 
check the information um, shared there. I think uh, what is uh, heavily under-researched is uh, questions from analysts and uh, um, the responses from, from the management. Uh, for, for IT, for big tech companies and Department of Justice, antitrust cases is becoming quite an important thing because there can be fines um, uh, on, on those companies. Satellite imaginary, um, you can, you can uh, come with many more sources. Think about it. Recap, um, what we've learned today, um, we started uh, from a concept of, fi of a financial rate of return. If you just save money as a retail investor, if, if you try to invest into, into the um, saving accounts, into the bond market, into the stocks uh, with a passive strategy, uh, then uh, we came up with, with the idea that uh, you need to have some benchmark and, uh, and uh, compare your uh, future trading strategy with, with this benchmark. Uh, so you will want to develop uh, a future strategy good enough to be uh, more profitable than a benchmark in most of the times. Then we talked about many macro um, data sets or data time series. Uh, we discussed um, some of the stocks uh, data sets. And now we will um, have a cheat sheet for a project. So if you, if you think that it's, it's uh, too much for you if you just started uh, doing all of that and straight away I share you the the knowledge and information that I captured uh, over the period of three years you just uh, need to do um, these uh, these steps and probably you you can just uh, replicate most of the steps that they have and you don't need to uh, change a different vertical or, or stock markets. You can just work on exactly the same data, but change slightly with the uh, companies that, that you use or with the approaches, with the models. So what I would advise you to do when you are thinking about your project, and actually there was a, a good uh, question in, in Slack that if, if I can start working on your project, I advise you to start straight away right now to work on, on your project because this is the most important thing for you uh, to have as a result of this um, course. Um, I would advise you to select one market or country. Um, I don't think that stocks, that global stock strategy is, is an easy thing to do. Probably if you do for a crypto, um, you can go global. Then select benchmarks to compare with, select your uh, risk return profile, uh, something um, that you see oftentimes in the news and you compare against. Select some macro indicators or economic context that you have. It, it may be global, it may be regional, it may be um, your, your country or um, the Actually, I advise to, to compare uh, versus um, options that you currently have to, to, to save and what is the most uh, impactful thing for your personal saving and investments and spending decisions. Then uh, you might want to think about the size of the data set, how many tickers companies do you want to have. I try to, to have 250 <coughs> companies uh, from, from the US and it was a uh, 3 million uh, um, records data set with uh, 300 features generated and it was a little bit too heavy for pandas so probably you you will want to start from a smaller data set but you need to think about it fundamentals data where to get it for how long yahoo, yahoo finance provides data for uh, for the last four years um, do you plan to to build something in, around financial reporting data um, whether you want to analyze a uh, large uh, amount of text or not, whether you want to use alternative data sources. The simplest option is to use uh, same or similar data sets, 
change stocks list uh, and models, hyperparameters and strategies, and build something for for yourself. Uh, one thing that's, that I want to uh, caution uh, you is do not leak the data. The thing is that you, you need to think um, what is available at that moment of time. If you generate some data that, that was available uh, one year ago, you can't include any future uh, known features because any model will quickly capture that and um, it will bias the results. You won't be able to trade and to use uh, that information. And some generic recommendations uh, for the course. This is designed to be free for everyone and please be active and helpful. Ask questions, ask questions to the Slido uh, on a Telegram, uh, reply to questions uh, on, on Slack if you know the answer. I would advise to prefer the simplest option when possible and build on it. So you, you need to iterate quickly. Uh, I would just uh, say that reuse most of the class materials Try to update it with new features, model strategies, and you are asked to do this uh, with uh, two questions in the home assignment. Home assignments designed to be easy, uh, but there are questions uh, for exploration. Uh, no, it may be not always easy, but they are straightforward. There are no tricky questions. Uh, start working on the project early and use your edge. So if you are an analyst, or uh, just uh, build uh, analytical uh, model and use your analytical skills. If, uh, if you live uh, and you know a lot about your, your country and um, some specific market uh, where you work in, just go and build a model around this country and market. Uh, that's how you might see less competition and you have um, better knowledge. If you're a software engineer, you might uh, use advanced data extraction, automation, tech stack for your models. If you're a ML practitioner, ML engineer, just go and build a more complicated ML model and probably you will get uh, better results. Homework. You might have seen that homework is already published. It's in uh, cohorts slash 2024 homework 1.md. You can uh, already submit the homework. Uh, there are five questions and two extra. It looks like this. Um, so there are questions and there are numerical answers. Question one, two, three, four, five. Um, Please use the, the code that, that they shared. You can, you can find most of it, um, in most of the examples that you need in the code. Um, then um, there are two open-ended questions, exploratory, investigate new metrics from the same data sources and try to read uh, articles about it and briefly explain why are you doing this. And uh, then um, another thing to, to think and to design a strategy, a time-driven strategy around earnings releases. Let's assume that um, there is an active earnings uh, releases season and you want to build something around it. Just, uh, you, you don't need to implement it, but just explain here while you, you don't know all the details how to and do the modeling and simulation, try to show um, how to build the end pro product on this. And there are some uh, standard uh, links on uh, um, standard questions uh, from any data talks uh, club um, homework assignment. Uh, you will need to supply homework URL. So it's, it's not just you received uh, some result and you don't show how you, you got it. It needs to be um, published on a GitHub, on a GIST uh, or any an, anywhere else actually. It can be any link in the internet. Um, links in public, optional, uh, but if you provide links uh, that 
you are learning with the, this course on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, anywhere you, you will get additional points. I think it's up to seven points. And for us, uh, just to understand how much time you spent on lectures, how much time you spent on homework and any problems or comments, if you see some errors in my code, if you think that it's too easy, it's uh, uh, too hard, or um, we, we want to cover something else, just please include this in, in, in the comments. I think that's it for today. Thanks everyone for listening and see you again soon, approximately in one and a half week. We will try to do um, breaks for uh, one and a half to two weeks between our courses. And um, the deadline for, for this uh, home assignment is one week. It is um, end of um, next Monday. Um, so see you soon and have a great week and happy learning.